Muhammad when he was not specifically receiving the revelation through angel Gabriel dictating to him word for word. And that's quite a different situation from the Council of Nicaea, for example, or other councils that sat down with various manuscripts, each are claiming to be the word of God, so they decide that this is apocryphal and this is authentic. In the case of the Quran, there have been no Qurans that say that this is to be accepted and this is to be rejected, this surah is to be added or this surah is to be deleted. So it is just the original revelation as the original revelation given to previous prophets. So this is, there is no similarity at all with the church councils there. Your uh, various questions about the mention of the Quran about the Bible. First of all, you mentioned the verses that deals with the non-changing of the word of God. I think I answered that partly in the presentation that in two verses in the Quran when it speaks about word of God, kalimat, it does not necessarily mean words in writing. Uh, for example, in surah number 18, it says, ما نفدت كلمات الله, which means the signs of power and existence of Allah, or the laws of Allah in creation. Secondly, when it says the word of God, even if you interpret it to mean scripture, even by the stretch of imagination, if you take all of them, which is not true, to refer to preservation of the word of God or his teaching, the answer is yes. The essential teaching of God of monotheism has been preserved and if there have been some changes before the Quran, the final revelation, preserved the word of God from any change or corruption. The various questions that you raised about the Quran confirming previous scriptures. I know that some missionary literature make a grave mistake and I have that notes on the, uh, the uh, book by Dr. Shirush, which I read before, that uh, alleged that uh, the Quran gives evidence that you should accept the Bible. Nowhere in the Quran, nowhere in the Quran does it say accept the Bible. Nowhere in the Quran does it say accept the Old Testament. And nowhere in the Quran does it say accept the New Testament. What the Quran speaks about specifically is a Torah, Torah and Injil. But even Muslim understanding of Torah is not the first five books, the Pentateuch, as defined by Jews and Christians but what Moses received on Mount Sinai. In fact, Christian scholars themselves were able to find out that part of that Torah was not written by Moses and usually most likely after him. In chapter 34 of the book of Deuteronomy, it speaks about the death and burial of Moses. How could have Moses written that and could have, how could that have been the revelation given on Mount Sinai? It uses in the past tense. So obviously that, 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 that's not the kind of Torah that the Quran refers to. And when the Quran speaks about the Injil, it, it never used it in the plural, never. They didn't say Gospels or the four Gospels. In fact, in the Quran it says Jesus taught the Injil. And Jesus himself in the Bible said that go and teach the Injil. And this was long time before any of the four Gospels were written. Did Jesus go about uh, carrying the books of John, Mark and Luke and teach them? They were not in existence. So what the Quran refers to is the revelation given to Allah through Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. The other question that you raised about if you're in doubt, ask those who read the book. This is a very simple thing to respond to. This is a rhetorical question that is directed to people who denied Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the originality of the revelation given to him. And this is not unusual. Dr. Shurush was quoting to us, Ya ayyuhal nabiyu idha talaqtum an nisa In one of his, the verses that he mistakenly quoted. Talaqtum is a plural, whereas it addresses the Prophet. It is well known among anyone with the slightest knowledge of tafsir or Quranic exegesis that the style of the Quran many times addresses the Prophet but it is meant to address people. That if you are in doubt, ask the people of the book. Secondly, it's just like saying if that brother could fly, he could go to Kansas City in two minutes. It does not mean necessarily that this could happen. It is an assumption that even if, if there is any doubt, ask. And the answer came quite clearly as narrated in many references that the Prophet said, لا أشك ولا أسأل. I have no doubt and I'm not going to ask anyone. And Ibn Abbas reported the same thing. And the fact of the matter that the Prophet actually never asked any source other than the revelation for information to be a source of Islam. Whenever he asked them, he asked them by way of establishing the evidence against them. And uh, th there is an incident that many people just keep quoting without putting things in context. That there was an incident where some Jews committed adultery and they came to Prophet Muhammad to give a ruling because these people were noble. And they said, if he rules in our favor, we'll accept his ruling. If he doesn't, okay, we'll not accept. So the Prophet asked them, don't you find in your Torah that this and such and such is the punishment for adultery? He did not ask for information. He asked to establish evidence against them. 
I'd like to just follow up on that then. If we are to read the Taurat and the Injil, where are those perfect books and where have they disappeared and why are we instructed to read something that does not exist? The Quran answers that question in no uncertain term in chapter 5 and you refer to verses 45 through 52 that says, we reveal to you, O Muhammad, this book, that is the Quran, confirming what remained, that means interpretive, what remained intact of the book before it, وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ A guardian over it. The word muhaymin comes from ulu, from being high above. That means some criterion to be used to assess what remained intact and what was changed. In the Quran itself, the very name of the Quran is given Al-Furqan. And Surah number 25 calls the Quran, actually, or 67, calls the Quran Al-Furqan. And the word Furqan in Arabic means the criterion between right and wrong, truth and falsehood. So for the Muslim, the original revelation given through Prophet Jesus, Moses, or any other prophet for that matter, can only be tested against the last authoritative and meticulously preserved revelation, the Quran. Whatever agrees with it, the Muslim accepts. What reason would the Muslim have to reject the Shema? Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And when Jesus was asked what is the most important commandment, and he spoke basically the same thing. He did not to believe in me as the Savior who shed my blood. No, he spoke also about the love of God and obedience to God. He confirmed this purity of monotheism. And when the Quran says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say Allah, he's Allah, the one and unique, the one who's independent of all needs, he begets not, nor was he begotten, and there is none like unto him. What reason would the Muslim have to say that this is false, I will not accept it? That might be part of the 75% that Dr. Shirush is talking about. But whenever there is difference, there is a belief, with all due respect, that human hand plays its role and I got you a confession from Paul himself that not everything he said was revelation. He said that himself. Bless you. You took seven and a half minutes instead of three minutes. But you need them and that's all right. Because there was a, yeah. a carryover of the No person. problem. No problem. So no problem. I'll give you an half and an half. No problem. <laughs> We're to be generous, you know, with each other. Yeah, but she raised the question. She now, the response. Yeah. as for the matter that he raised, I want to hold you in suspense till tomorrow. Tomorrow, in the next debate, I will explain to you for the first time in some of your lives here why we have in the Quran only singular, gospel, not gospels. And I believe I will present scholarly, scientific evidence that you can hardly deny. Now, can anybody with intellectual honesty accept a book? no matter how holy, as co-eternal with God. If such a belief exists, it is erroneous, beloved doctor, because God and God alone is the first cause. Since a book is written, or let us say, created by an author, then the author existed before the book, and the two could never be co-equal in existence. Furthermore, philosophically, one cannot think in any language without words in his brain. Therefore, if mental and intellectual thought must precede the spoken or written word, the Quran can never claim coexistence with God. It borders on blasphemy to place to place a book, no matter how sacred, on equal honor with the Almighty. In a literal sense, the Quran never claims to be the word of God. Let me repeat that. In a literal sense, the Quran never claims to be the word of God. The Quran claims only to be the speech of God in Arabic, Kalamullah. And if any one of the idolaters seeketh thy protection, O Muhammad, then protect him so that he may hear the word of Allah and afterward convey him to his place of safety. That is because they are a folk who know not. Surah At-Tawbah, Repentance 9.6. However, the Arabic, which is translated over here as the word of Allah, is actually Kalamullah, which in Arabic translated to English should have been translated the speech of God or the words of God. Any Arab will tell you, even if the word Kalam is translated, it can also be words, plural, but never word, singular. Amazingly enough, it affirms that Jesus is the word of God. And remember, when the angel said, O Mary, lo Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him, whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, illustrious in the world and the hereafter, and one of those brought near unto Allah. 
Surat Al Imran, the family of Imran, chapter 3, verse 45. Again, we find the same declaration in Surat Al Nisa, 417, is 4171. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah, and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him, so believe in Allah and his messengers. Thank you. Sure. Very simply and briefly, that's not a problem at all. No, sir. They, nobody you ever. You I'm sorry. You're out of order. You answered. You answered. He responded. Out of order. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's not a question to me. No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's not a question. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the uh, uh, the uh, the words get in a way like questioning, and uh, you kind of motivate the other uh, the other speaker to 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 uh, to stand up and answer, thinking that you want to uh, to answer his question. As if you want him to answer your question. Uh, we would go to uh, the next question, please. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum assalamu alaikum. Can you make that a little louder, please? Can you make that a little louder, please? A truly Arabian blood. <laughs> I see, I really seek God protection from the rejected Satan. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, peace, mercy, and blessing from Allah upon you all. My very dear brother in humanity, Dr. Sharosh, I'm very, very glad to see you finally, after so many years I've been watching your debates, that you quit making the comparison between in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, like in the name of, the, uh, the name of, uh, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Alhamdulillah that you quit this. Hey, come on. I have the... I drove 24 hours to come and see you. I'm your brother Muhammad Yasser from North Carolina. Hey, we spoke several times over the phone. Brother Muhammad Yasser, to the question, please. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Shosh, you, today you're trying to prove that uh, the Quran is not the Word of God. And uh, before you told me, in the Quran, uh, before you told me, in the Quran, in the first page, Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening, over the phone you told me, but because it say, Ihdina Sarat Al-Mustaqim, which it can be translated as, show us the straight way. That means we are not on the straight way. And you give me an example that why do I call the fire uh, department to come and to my house and my house not burning and you told me as well that al maghdubi alayhim which you, and who not who go not astray that's us the muslims please describe to my other brothers muslims and christians what do you mean by ihdina sirat al mustaqim that we are not on the sirat al mustaqim as well as al maghdubi alayhim. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I kind of uh, gathered that you are our man, you know. <laughs> you are taking pictures and everything. No, nevertheless, I'm so glad every one of you is here. And from the depths of my heart, I want to thank you, in case I forget later, for coming and allowing me the pleasure of being with you and sharing my heart and convictions. And you've been such a gracious audience. Thank you very much. Now, as to answer our friend, I'd like to remind you, first of all, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come, comes unto the Father but by me. In other words, he was the only person who ever made that claim. Did Muhammad make that claim? Did Moses make that claim? Did Abraham make that claim? You tell me. No. Why? Because he was the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, when we look at this surah, we are discovering a people who are seeking the path, seeking the way seeking the truth and I would like to say in this context every human being fits in but when you come to the other part where it says the word an'amta which comes from the word grace we are identified as Christians I mean by Christians not culturally but experientially born from above living as the word of God teaches rather than being born in a religion like so many people these days who claim to be Christians but live like the devil 
and the same with Muslims and other religions, but abide by the word of God. Therefore, they are the ones who have experienced the grace of God. The grace of God revealed through Jesus Christ. For the word of God says that the law was given by Moses, but grace was revealed by Jesus Christ our Lord. أهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم It is believed by many Of course you may not agree with them That المغضوب عليهم Which means really the one uh, whom you have condemned or judged Are definitely the Jews because they rejected Jesus And this is evidenced in the fact that 37 years after they did that After they crucified Christ We know that Titus attacked the city of Jerusalem and murdered no less than 600,000 of the people, demolished their city, and there was never again a kingdom of Israel, and no nation by that name until 1948 in our day and time. And that means... Pardon me? Excellent, thank you. Which means, not any one of those who are lost. Everyone without God through Jesus Christ revealing himself to him, is lost. I was lost personally until I was 18 years of age, although I was brought in the hometown of Jesus and studied the Bible, memorized the scripture, but I was born again, and as a result of that, I did not become one of the Dalin, but one of those who are Muhtadin, who have found the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus Christ our Lord. But let me back up to what you also began uh, about the, the Trinity. I have not disavowed my position. I really believe that the Muslims see a corrupted trinity in the Quran which begins every surah except one. One surah does not have it. And there is an argument among scholars, Dr. Badawi, whether that is part of the chapters or not. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Some say it's a verse, some say it is not. But it is hanging there in space. Whatever you say, we begin our churches quite often with the words Bismillah wal ibn wal ruh al qudus And what is the great difference between Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Thank you. <coughs> Keep you hanging there. First of all, just a quick comment on one question that came before. No Muslims say that the Quran is co-eternal with God. That's misrepresentation of Islam. What Muslim scholars said that the word of God, his knowledge and his wisdom is with him because it's part of his knowledge and wisdom. But the Quran as book, paper is something that muhdath that came later. So I wanted to correct this uh, misunderstanding. Might be innocent uh, misunderstanding. Secondly, on the question of ahdana sarat al mustaqim, it is actually meaning that keep guiding us. And who among human beings can say that I don't need? I am so proud that I don't need to pray to God to guide me the straight path. Even if you're guided in terms of your faith, you need guidance in your life, in your action, in a day-to-day -day. I Continue to guide us in the straight path. This is the prayer of humble people, not arrogant people. The Quran also says it quite clearly when it is said, did anyone claim to be the way, the truth, and the life, even if we assume, and that's an assumption that Jesus said that. Yes, there are something analogous to that in the Quran. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad, if you truly love Allah, follow me, Allah will love you. The Quran says, wa ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger of Allah. One ayah even says, Man yuti'u Rasul faqad ata'a Allah. Whoever obeys the Prophet, he is obeying Allah. Not that the Prophet, well, Allah, we don't say that, is Allah, but he is the spokesman of Allah. And what way, truth and life, except the way of Allah Himself? <coughs> yes, every Prophet was way and truth and life in his lifetime because he represented the true teaching of God. As far as interpretation or that the Quran speak, al muhtadin are the Christians with all due respect and without feeling to hurt any of the feeling of my Christian brethren. This is a far-fetched interpretation because that very same Quran condemned in no uncertain terms not only forms of Trinity that uh, Dr. Shirush and other Christians consider corrupt like Maryamites and others, but it condemned in no uncertain terms also the Trinity which is the belief of the common uh, the uh, uh, mainstream of Christianity and I can give you reference to the verse but let's discuss that tomorrow inshallah the other aspect about maghdubi alayhim and dalin yes it's true that some humans who make errors or may are correct have interpreted maghdubi alayhim as Jews dalin as Christians to me the more correct understanding because that's not in the Quran it doesn't say i.e. Jews i.e. Christians but in my humble understanding the Quran here speaks about two things that Muslim pray not to be one of them 
مغضوب عليهم that Allah has his wrath on them which means those who deliberately rejected faith rejected to accept Prophet Muhammad after the evidence has been given or rejected faith period and became atheist الضالين refers to even people who might have good sincere intention to seek God but they lost their way ضالين so they are put even in a different category that maybe Allah would forgive them once they accept the guidance as far as the final point about the so-called similarity between Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and the Trinity, there is absolutely no similarity. Because ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim, most compassionate, most merciful, are both attributes of Allah. No Muslim ever said, ar-Rahman became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we saw its glory. Assalamu alaikum. And my question is to Dr. Anil Sharosh. Uh, I believe I'm kind of a little confused. I don't know. Are you a scholar or 